In this video, I'm gonna be making caramel pecan cheesecake bars. Uh, this recipe is from the September 2005 edition of Southern Living Magazine. Uh, we're gonna go over the ingredients you need first. We are not only going to be making caramel pecan cheesecake bars, but you also need to make a quick caramel frosting, and that recipe is in here too, so I'm gonna give you those ingredients separately. So the first thing you need is two cups of graham cracker crumbs. I wanted to show you, that's the box we bought. We just bought the Keebler. And how much of those did you use, Kevin? Almost, um, probably two thirds of the box. So yeah, like so there's not a ton left. So make sure you buy a brand new box. Um, you need half a cup of butter melted, which is one stick. You need four eight ounce packages of cream oh. cheese softened. So we bought the Philadelphia brand. You need three fourths cup sugar one-fourth cup all-purpose flour, three large eggs, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and then you're gonna need your uh, quick caramel pecan frosting. So I'm gonna give you the ingredients for this. Uh, you need two 14 ounce cans of sweetened condensed milk. You need half a cup of firmly packed light brown sugar. You need, uh, you need half a cup half of butter. Cup one teaspoon of vanilla, and then you're gonna need one and a half cups of toasted pecans. And uh, I haven't measured those out yet because we're not gonna do this recipe until after we get the, the bars almost finished. Oh. So the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna make the crust. So you want to get your, uh, your graham cracker crumbs, and you need a nine by 13 inch pan. Um, I have a parchment paper in here uh, because since these are bars when we're finished with them, you will be able to pick this whole thing up and pull it out of this pan and cut them and your pan will be completely clean. So I love parchment paper, but it's a nine by 13 inch pan. You need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and just sprinkle your graham cracker crumbs and we're gonna kind of spread them out like this. And then you're gonna take your, um, and we can go ahead and remove our clips right now, I think. But you just want them, I, I like to use clips just to keep it in place for a little bit. And now you take your butter, and like I said, this is for the crust. So drizzle it over the top. Don't pour it all out in one place or it'll, it's hard to spread. And do like this. And then use a fork, and you want to, um, all of your graham cracker crumbs will look damp. Okay, so now this is uh, wet, and now I'm going to flatten it out with my fingers. And, you know, a lot of times when we're making these crust, crusts, or when Kevin's making these crusts, we do this part in a bowl and then, and then dump it into the pan. Uh, we're thinking that the reason the directions tell you to do it this way is so that you don't lose any butter at all on the edge of the bowl. Um, and this wasn't bad. It, it did not take that long at all to do. So now I'm going to uh, put this in my oven for eight minutes, but as soon as I get this in uh, the oven, we'll be back because we're going to uh, do the next part. So now you want to add your cream cheese to your mixer and you want to uh, cream it until it is smooth. So you want to take your sugar and flour and combine them together. And then you're gonna gradually add this to your cream cheese. So I'm gonna stop this for one second and add, start off with a little bit, and then I'll keep adding uh, more and more until we've used it all. So now you want to add your eggs one at a time. Everything 
is mixed together. Now you want to stir in your tablespoon of vanilla. And our crust is getting ready to come out of the oven. My timer is getting ready to go off. And so then we're gonna pour this over the crust. So I'm just gonna give this a good stir. So um, you're going to try to spread this evenly over the top. is on the same same temperature 350 you haven't changed it and you're going to bake these for 40 minutes so this is the uh, the cheesecake out of the oven we're going to let it sit here on a wire rack and cool completely and then we're gonna make our caramel uh, topping so now we're gonna make our quick caramel frosting uh, what you want to do is you want to put all of your ingredients, your vanilla, your brown sugar, your condensed milk, and your butter in a pan, everything but your pecans. So you put all of this in a pan and you uh, bring it to a boil, stirring constantly over medium low heat. And this you want this to cook for three to five minutes or until it has a pudding-like texture. So we're just gonna get all that going on the stove. This is ready, it has a pudding consistency. You want to make sure that you stir continuously because it will get stuck on the bottom. These are our toasted pecans. So you just put, put them in a, um, your pan and you want to um, uh, get a little scald on them, but not too much. You just want to toast them. And then these, uh, this is our cheesecake. You want to pour this evenly over the top. And I'm not doing a very good job getting it even right now, but that's okay because I will spread this out. It's very, very thick as you can see. So it's best to use a, a non-stick pan, definitely. So spread this out and you do want to make sure that your caramel sauce is warm. So if you make your caramel sauce up beforehand, you just need to make sure that you heat it up so that it'll spread. Uh, but we're gonna put it all down in the, every little corner. And then I'm going to take plastic wrap and I'm going to uh, cover this. And you're going to put this in the refrigerator for eight hours. So we will see you right back in eight hours. I wanted to say we're actually going to cover this with aluminum foil. We tried to cover it with plastic and the plastic wanted to stick to this really, really bad. So we're gonna cover it with aluminum foil so that it won't stick. The cheesecakes have been chilling. The bars have been chilling for um, eight hours. So you can see it stuck just a little bit to the top. Um, so just when you're um, covering it, just kind of try to keep it up in the middle. So I'm gonna pick this up and cut it into bars. And um, I was gonna try to use a pizza cutter and see if that'll work to cut this. And we'll see if it will. If, it, if the pizza cutter, if it gets stuck for some reason, I'll go to a knife, but I'm gonna try this at first just to see um, how it works. Pizza cutter isn't bad, but I don't know that it made it any better. So I'm gonna cut the rest of them just using a knife and see if that's easier. I actually think this is easier. So, I just thought, you know, if I could do it with a pizza cutter, I would. But yeah, I actually like this better.
recipe, like I said, is from the September 2005 edition of Southern Living Magazine. And I will show you what their bars look like. I think uh, mine are pretty close. Yeah, I don't think they're quite as dark, the caramely top is. They're not as dark, but uh, yeah, and there's honestly, it looks like they used a lot more pecans for that picture. Um, well, I'm sure they did. But, right, exactly. <laughs> with, with tweezers, even. <laughs> and so the, the lighting, the uh, caramel color could be down to the lighting, too. Yeah. So you never know. Um, they with, might have cooked it longer and made it browner, too. And they too. might have, yes. This is a very, very thick topping, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and there was a recipe. If you wanted to make um, a coconut... Uh, pecan frosting, all you do is add uh, one and a half um, cups of sweetened flaked coconut and it, it becomes a coconut um, uh, caramel frosting. It's thick, isn't it? It makes for a big bite. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it has a good flavor. It has a very nice flavor. I'd like to try the cheesecake by itself without the topping. Yeah, I think it's your traditional cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just a traditional cheesecake. But honestly, mm -hmm. it's not near as sweet without that topping. Mm -hmm. So if you made this and, and you didn't, you could use it as a traditional cheesecake, but I don't know why you would. Because it needs that sweetness, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, that's good. It, it's really, the, the topping is really thick. Yes, it's, I mean, it's extremely um, thick. It doesn't have the traditional caramel flavor, like that, that burnt caramel, so maybe it needed to get a little darker, but it still has an excellent flavor. Mm -hmm. Over the top sweet. I do think if you like coconut, um, you would probably really, really like it with the addition Did of coconut. Did you reduce the pecans in? No. No, no, yeah. no. Even if you make it with the pecans, you still use the same cup and a half. Uh, okay. I mean, even if you make it with coconut, you still use the same cup and a half of pecans. You just add, you just add coconut to yeah. it. And so it's the exact same recipe. I could um, that being pretty good too. Yeah, you're just adding a cup and a half of, of coconut. So yeah, I think that would be very, very good. I made it this way though, just because I thought more people uh, would be attracted to the um, the recipe without coconut right. than they would with coconut. Yeah, and the pecans are good. You can taste them. They're not like a really strong, strong, strong flavor of pecans, but you definitely get the pecans. But I mean, look, you can totally, <laughs> that is so thick that you yeah, can totally oh yeah. take that off and, and you're left with a plain cheesecake at the bottom. But I think that's a good recipe. I like it a lot. Uh, you could, like I said, you could make the base, basic cheesecake bars and add whatever topping you wanted of your choice. Uh, but I think this is a very good recipe. Yeah, you can put cherries on top of it. You, you absolutely could. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.